So if you ever talk cosmology with an atheist, it's likely that you'll come up with uh, a discussion of randomness. And normally this is cited um, within the context of the double slit experiment that is really kind of the centerpiece of, of quantum mechanics uh, from as I understand it. Um, very quickly, I guess, uh, the double slit experiment, for people who don't know, and I shouldn't be an authority on this, and if this is the first time you're hearing this, don't take my word for it, go read something else. But there's a, a photon gun that's able to shoot a single photon, there's a screen with two slits in it, and then there's a wall behind it. A single shot is fired, a single photon whizzes through space, goes through, assumably, one of the two slits, and then it oddly smacks into the wall in a very wayward kind of position. Um, they shoot another photon, and again, another photon smacks into a completely different position on the, the wall. And mem remember here that the wall, the screen, and the photon gun are all in fixed locations. They're not swiveling about or anything. Well, they let the gun run for a while, and they realize that after a few hours, um, the photons have, have created a pattern that is not at all uh, typical of particles, like a photon would be, but rather um, the result of, of waves, and specifically waves interfering with themselves. And this is the basis of the idea that the photon somehow, after being shot from the gun, turns into a, uh, a wave, goes through both slits as a wave, and then going through both slits interferes with itself and then is actualized once again as a photon at some point um, when it hits the wall. Crazy stuff. Okay. Now, because we have this sort of um, this, this, this difficulty in predicting where one photon will land by just looking at the previous photons that had already landed, uh, people have come to the conclusion that it's actually a probability distribution and that it's not possibly determinable where the next photons or electrons or whatever you happen to be shooting um, will land. Because of that, basis of reality is random and there is no logical necessity at that point for intelligent design or any, any such thing. The problem, though, is a discussion, brings us to a discussion of Bayesian probability similar to how we were talking about in two videos ago. Um, Bayesian probability is going to be uh, a discussion of trying to explain something that is admittedly unknown, but on the basis of previous evidence. Uh, so long as you, you have evidence, you assume a, a probability in a very particular way, in, in, a, in a characteristically Bayesian way. With that being said, it's important to note that there's a guy named uh, Wolfram that works with a thing called uh, cell Cellular Automata, which essentially is a computer program that uh, replicates cells within the program, uh, within the program by a, a particular algorithm. And these algorithms are all uh, very, very particular, very similar to each other, and they can be very simple. It's, it's not a complicated equation at all. Uh, algorithm. That being said, uh, this guy Wolfram, who's been working with these, can create a number of very interesting things. And normally when, say, a, a theist discusses Wolfram, they immediately say, look, because he's able to create a design, geometric design with these algorithms, therefore the basis of reality must have intelligent design behind it. That argument I'm not interested in making, actually. What rather I would suppose is that very Interestingly, within his findings were uh, a number of different, very simple algorithms that produced incredibly complicated pictures that stood very starkly against all others that he could find. The other ones that he had were very geometric. There are triangles and sides of triangles and kinds of things that I'm sure you'd be familiar with when you see it. And I've left a, a link. Um, skip ahead to about... 1250 and and he'll start talking about prime numbers and when he starts putting in prime numbers or the digits of, of pi um, or no rather he was trying to produce the digits of pi by an algorithm now um, so instead of which is interesting the, uh, as a side note here the whole premise of his discussion is what he calls a need for a new science that um, most people know that we can't We've never come to the end of pi, but this guy is, is supposing that there is an algorithm 
that can encapsulate pi without expressing all of the digits. And what happens is the um, just like just like you have with pi, just because of one digit that you get, the next digit is um, very difficult to determine just from the previous digits. However, it can be reproduced, he supposes, through an algorithm, um, nevertheless. Because of this evidential basis, I think it is justified in, in saying that through a Bayesian sense of probability, it is most likely that what we are assuming at the quant or what we are seeing at the quantum level is not actually randomness. We actually have no precedent for that yet. Uh, the Bayesian premise that we have is that there are algorithms and that there are determined systems that can create very complicated pictures, very complicated effects while being themselves very simple and completely determined. Like I said, there is no randomness variable included in any of these. Um, which I think is quite ironic because it's normally the atheist that likes to use Bayesianism, uh, Bayesian probability, in order to suggest what's most likely about supernatural claims. When in this case, if they want to argue the nature of reality being random, they're going to, do, they're going to have to somehow disprove that it is um, just the result of, a, of something similar to the cellular automata. So that was a lot. Um, more interestingly, perhaps, uh, there's a guy named Telios? No, T Telos? Telos. Telos 34. I'll leave a link to him. New guy. He came around, I guess, just a week ago. He already had like a 50 subscribers. He came in swinging. This guy uh, was came in taking on both Urban Elf and Theo Warner at the same time. And as civil as both Theo Warner and Urban Elf can be, I think we all know that the people who frequent their videos can be less civil, and so I'm sure he would appreciate um, Telios would, uh, yeah, Telos would appreciate your support. So go subscribe to the kid. I think we can hold them to a high standard of expectation.